In this video, we will discuss about the differ feature that Blue Prism offers in work queues. When you add items to the work queues, you can differ or in other words, you can postpone the processing of those items in the queue to a particular time. For example, in our currency conversion process, as soon as the items are added into the queue, it launches the XC currency converter site and start picking up and processing the items one by one. But let's say if you don't want the items to be picked up until a particular time, for example, we want to start the process at 10 a.m. and the items should get added to the queue immediately, but we don't want the items in the queue to start getting processed before 11 a.m. In such a scenario, we can use the differ parameter. If you double click the add to queue stage, you can see an input called differ until. This input will allow you to specify a time until when the items should be deferred. So instead of entering the differ time here, we will create an environment variable and map it to a data item which I can then use it here. So I'll go to the system tab, environment variables, and I'll create a new variable. We will name it as differ until. Set the type as date time, type the description. And for now, let's leave the value as blank and click apply. Then go back to the process studio, click refresh, drag and drop a data item, double click, select the exposure as environment and select the name differ until, which is the environment variable we just created. Then click OK. Now double click add to queue, drag and drop the data item differ until here and click OK. Now let's go to the environment variable and we will set a future time. Right now the time is 5.54 p.m. so we will set the time as 6.30 p.m. I can set the date and time by clicking this calendar and clock icons. So I will set the date as today's date which is 21st October and you can see it assigned some random time here. I can either edit this or click on the clock icon and set the required time. I'll simply edit this time and click apply. Now if we go to the process studio, click refresh and open the differ until data item, you can see it picked up the time we set. So let's run the process and see what happens. I'll set a breakpoint on the close workbook stage and click go. Okay, the breakpoint reached and if we go to the control room, select the queue. You can see that the column next review has the deferred date and time we set. Until the last video it used to be empty. Alright, now let's go back and click go again. Okay, it reached the next breakpoint which is get next item. Now if we step again, you can see that the queue data collection and item ID are all empty. So basically the get next item action will only pick the pending items that are immediately available for process. It will ignore all other items. Since all our items are deferred, they are not picked by the get next item. Now if I step again, it will take the no path because the item ID is blank. So what we really want is to have the process keep checking the get next item until an item is available. So let's select this entire block and move to the right. Then delete this link and I'll add a sleep stage of 5 seconds. Connect the no path of this decision stage to sleep and sleep to get next item. So now when it comes to this decision stage and finds that there is no item to process, it will take the no path, then sleep for 5 seconds and go to the get next item again. This loop will go on until it gets an item, but the problem is it will be an infinite loop because once all the items are processed, it will again go to the get next item instead of going to the update Excel stage. 
So the workaround for this problem is to add another decision stage after this decision stage to check if there are any pending items that are deferred. If there are no more pending deferred items then the process can go to the update excel stage. So we will again delete this no link, move up the sleep stage, drag and drop an action stage, double click. I'll name it as get deferred items count. Select the business object work queues. And if you take a look at the actions, we really don't have an action specifically to get only the deferred items. There is an action called get pending items, but unfortunately this action will also not look for deferred items. It will only look for pending items that are readily available to process. So we will select this get report data. Now this action is actually used for getting queue reports, but we can use it to get the count of only the deferred items. We have a bunch of inputs and outputs, but we don't have to worry about all of them right now. We will only use queue name, loaded start date, loaded end date, include deferred items, and in the outputs tab, we will only use the item count. Okay, so I'll enter the queue name, which is currency queue. The loaded start date and loaded end date will allow you to filter the items that were loaded into the queue in a specific period of time. For example, if you want to check only for the items that were loaded into the queue between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., you can mention the loaded start date as 2 p.m. and the loaded end date as 5 p.m. You need to mention this in date time format like this. If you leave the loaded end date as blank, then it'll take the end of day of the loaded start date, which means in this case, 21st October 2017, 11.59 p.m. So I will leave the loaded end date as blank for now. Similarly, if I don't mention the time, then it'll take the time as start of the day, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 hours. So I'll delete the time as well and simply leave the date alone. This means that all the items loaded on the 21st October will be considered. Then I'll mention true for include deferred items because that's what we want. And in the output, we will create a new data item called deferred count to store the number of deferred items. And click OK. Now we will add a decision stage double click I'll name it as deferred items drag and drop deferred count and we will check if it is greater than zero and click OK now we will link the stages so now when this item ID exists returns false it will get the number of deferred items which will be stored in this deferred count and this decision stage checks if the deferred count is greater than zero and if it is yes it will sleep again and if, if it is no then there are no more deferred items so it will proceed to update excel so let's test it I will again set the next stage to get next item and if I step you can see the queue data collection item ID are empty so when I step again it will take the no path and when I step again you can see the deferred count shows 7 and if I step again it will take the yes path which will go to sleep now this loop continues until the get next item stage starts picking up the items now you might be wondering why we have to do all this. Why can't we simply create a decision stage after this launch stage where it will simply check for the current time and if it is greater than or equal to 11 a.m. And if it is greater than or equal to 11 a.m. it will just sleep for 5 seconds or 10 seconds. Yes, you're absolutely right. In this particular case which I have demonstrated, differ may not be the most appropriate option. But differ is a very useful feature which we will be using in much more complex scenarios in the future videos. So this video was just for you to understand how the differ feature actually works. Okay, now before we end this video, I want to show you a secret. If I go to my date and time settings, 
you can see that I have set the time zone as UTC, but for all my previous videos, it was IST, Indian Standard Time, which is five and a half hours ahead of UTC. There's an interesting reason why I changed my time zone for this particular video. We will discuss that in the next video. If your computer is set on a different time zone than UTC, and if you check the queue after adding the items, you will notice that the next review column will show a different time than what you set in the differ until environment variable. For example, in the environment differ until environment variable, if you set like 5 p.m., you might see that the uh, next review column showing a different time altogether. That depends on what time zone your computer is running on. In my next video, you will understand the reason behind this. Until then, keep guessing and if you find out the answer, please comment below this video. Okay, so finally, here is your homework for today. Redesign this currency conversion process in such a way that for every one hour, a new currency exercise output file is generated with the latest INR value. So you first have to start the process with this input file. It immediately starts processing the items, updates the INR columns, saves it as a separate file with the file name containing the date and time. Now exactly after one hour, it should again get the latest INR values from XC Currency Converter site, update the Excel file, save it as a new file with the date and time on the file name. Repeat this for the next two hours. So basically there should be four output files that are generated where each of them are generated at a frequency of one hour. You have to use the differ feature to accomplish this. As usual, I have uploaded the code onto Google Drive and added the link in the description which you can download and use. Okay, so I hope you have a fair understanding of differ feature now. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.